Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new Genentech PC product showcase. In today's full length featured review, we'll be taking a look at the brand new ASUS Republic of Gamers Strixgar 16. So without any delay, let's go ahead and get things started with our unboxing. This particular laptop will be shipped to you in a regular cardboard box and inside you're going to find this decorative gray interior box. Once we get that opened up, we kind of pull out almost like a secondary little box inside which has the laptop located right at the top. You'll notice that for protection during shipping, the laptop has a plastic wrap around it. And then of course the edges of the box itself are cardboard and then expanded. This protects it from getting scratched or crushed during shipping. Now just underneath of the laptop, it will hinge open and you'll find the exchangeable rear plates for the laptop hinge. We're gonna find our power supply. And this power supply is rated for a 330 watt output. And then in the final compartment is where you're gonna find the paper product manual and warranty information. So that completes the unboxing. That's everything we'll find inside. And let's move on to the next part of the review. So a quick look at the two-tone bottom plate of the laptop and we got to remove the protective plastic cellophane. You can immediately notice the size difference between the Strixcar 18 and the Strixcar 16. This one being a 16 inch laptop in a 16 by 10 format. So it's definitely a little bit easier to carry around than its larger version. And here's a little advertisement insert on the top so you can see some of the features of the laptop. So upon opening the laptop up, we'll see that we have a little cloth between the keyboard and the screen for protection. So now let's talk about the size and weight of this laptop. The laptop comes in at five pounds and 11 ounces, and that would be equivalent to just a little bit over two and a half kilograms. Now, once you throw the charging adapter in with it as well, you're at eight pounds and two ounces. And that would be 3.7 kilograms. For measurements, we've got coins for scale, so a quarter in the back. And you can see the rear hinge comes up over an inch, about an inch and a half in total height. And towards the front, a penny for scale, and we're just a little bit over one inch. So now let's power up our laptop for the first time and take a quick look at the external features. You'll see that we have the RGB strip across the front, which of course can be tweaked through software. We have the 16 by 10 LCD panel, the low profile chiclet style keyboard with the individual RGB backlit keys. And we do have a fairly unique oversized touchpad in the center, which now doubles as the right hand side of the keyboard on the larger laptops. Since we're missing that keyboard real estate, you can now have those functions built into the touchpad. We still do have the translucent casing for the laptop, which kind of lets you see some of the components down below. Our built in microphone and HD webcam. And as previously mentioned, our screen here is going to be a 16 inch diagonal screen with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So let's now take a moment to go take a closer look at our interfaces for connectivity. Starting from the left, we have a port for charging the laptop and running off of mains power, RJ45 for local network connectivity, a full-size HDMI 2.1 output, two USB Type-C connections. One of them has Thunderbolt 4 and one is a generic display port. And then we have our 3.5 millimeter connection for headphones or microphones. As we swing around to the rear side of the laptop, we'll see that we have no connectivity back here for any of the interfaces, but this is where you can replace the removable hinge covers for decorative purposes. And also we do have that full RGB bar across the back, as well as a lot of exhaust for the system's cooling and ventilation. Now for the right hand side of the laptop on this side, we just have two standard USB type A ports. They are USB 3.2. And again, we'll see some of the ventilation intakes. So let's take one last quick look at the laptop before we move into the next portion of our review.
So moving along in the review here is device manager so we can look at some of the included hardware. We do have the full-fledged NVIDIA RTX 4090 in the GPU area, and we have the full-fledged Intel Core i9-13980HX. Here is the panel information on the monitor. And as mentioned before, it's a high resolution screen at 2560 by 1600, a full 240 hertz refresh rate, and it's supposed to have a three millisecond response time. For more information on the CPU, here is the CPU Z information. And for more information on the GPU, here's all the GPU-Z information. Let's go take a thermal look at the laptop with our infrared camera and we'll get a baseline before we start running some benchmarks on the system to see how it handles the current temperatures and how it handles the increase in temperatures. So in this preliminary result, we see that all the heat is concentrated towards the rear of the system. The keyboard itself is letting quite a bit of that heat out, but the area where the hands would be is nice and cool, so that's a good thing to see. As we move from the keyboard area over to the side, we'll see a very dramatic hot spot from the ventilation being located here. So this is one of the areas where the system is gonna use to cool down and the major area located on the back, this is the major exhaust component. You'll see that this is a major hot spot, and of course the table itself has gotten hot from the exhausted air. With preliminary outside temperatures now completed, let's go take a look at the inside temperatures using the sensors. We have the CPU anywhere from 60 to 70 degrees Celsius, depending on which core you're looking at. As we go down to the GPU temperatures, currently the GPU is registering a maximum temperature of 56 degrees Celsius. So these are our baseline temperatures. And our last measurements that we'll take before we start our benchmarks is going to be the sound levels. So we'll take our meter here and we'll get the worst case scenario readings by placing it right next to the intake and exhaust of the laptop. Now we're moving into our benchmarking section of the review and we've gone ahead and started up Fire Strike. While the benchmark is underway, we'll go revisit our thermal camera and see if things have changed. We do see a little bit more heat now located in that center back region. Again, the hand areas are still nice and cool to the touch, so no issues there. We see the screen itself is now picking up a little bit more heat than before. A little bit larger and brighter hotspot on the exhaust, which is good because that means heat's getting out of the system. And of course, the major exhaust back here is going to be the hottest spot. And a look at the power adapter itself and how it heats up when it's under load. And time to revisit our sound meter to see how much those levels have changed now that the system is under load from a benchmark. Again, these are the worst case scenario readings since we're taking these measurements right next to the intake and exhaust and we have everything fairly close to the laptop. Uh, the numbers have dramatically gone up now that the system's under load and there's also some coil whine that can be heard, though the coil whine is not as loud as the fans themselves. So Firestrike has finished and we check in with a score of 33,139 for the performance. A quick look at our performance graphs. And let's go back and take a look at our maximum temperatures.
So we can see that the CPU cores have now reached anywhere from 90 up to 100 degrees Celsius on the maximum temperature reached, which makes this one of the hottest running CPUs that we've benchmarked in a while as far as right out of the box, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Now for the GPU, it did much better. It got to a maximum of 74 degrees Celsius. So for our next benchmark score, we got Firestrike Ultra at 12,466. A quick look at all of the performance charts. And our Time Spy score of 18,589. and the Time Spy Extreme score of 9,365. And for the last 3D Mark benchmark, we have Port Royal at 12,444. Now for our real-time run of Cinebench R23. And we were able to finish with scores of 25,975 for multi-score and 2,105 for a single core score. And next up is gonna be Blender. And here we have our benchmark results, and this is using the CPU only for processing. And one more run of Blender, and now we're gonna go ahead and add the GPU in for hardware acceleration. And here is the scores for the benchmark using the GPU acceleration. So now we're moving along into the final segment of the review, and that's gonna be the system disassembly. You'll see that there are many screws to remove and they are of different sizes. So if you take apart this laptop, be sure to keep track of which laptop screw goes where so you don't break it when you put it back together. So with the bottom panel off, you'll see all the ventilation that's cut into that bottom panel to help keep the system cool. And our first look of the inside of the system. Large battery going across the bottom. This is a 90 watt hour battery. Speakers flanking the left and right hand sides. Thermal shields over the system RAM in the center. Thermal shield over the system SSD on the left. Over to the right hand side is our second SSD for the system. And you can see there's a fairly large and robust three fan cooling system. Now we're moving all of those components and we get to look at what was underneath. We see the CPU and the GPU and we notice that there is liquid metal used as the thermal interface material and we believe that's one of the reasons the temperatures were so high. So looking back at our thermal test earlier during benchmarking, those high CPU temperatures, they can be corrected by repasting the laptop. And we actually offer that as a free service. And having us complete this service for you actually preserves the system warranty. So there's no risk involved in having it done. So that is the full look at the brand new ASUS Republic of Gamers Strixgar 16. We hope that you enjoyed our detailed review, including the benchmarks and disassembly of this laptop. If this is a laptop that you've been interested in, then check the video description down below and you'll find the product page link. And there you can find the current pricing and availability as well as the full system specifications. And we know that one video can never answer every single question that's out there. So by all means, if there was a question you had that the video didn't answer, feel free to go and ask those questions down below in the comment section so we can answer those for you and everybody else. But don't forget that if you have any needs for a one-on-one -on -one personalized service, you can always contact us by phone or email as well. So with this review done, we just want to remind everybody once again that this was Gen Tech PC, and we'll see you next time.